the Earth globe in the Vedic culture. I've always found this a very interesting, if not fascinating subject, so let's delve in straight away. I'll be exploring facts and quotes supporting the notion that the ancient Vedic sadhus, holy people, knew that the Earth, from the point of view of our five senses, is a globe. In the Jyotish Shastras, those are works on astronomy and astrology, the fifth of the six Vedangas, ancient sciences, the word Bhugola is often used. It means sphere of the Earth, used in ancient geometry, mathematics and astronomy. The Mahabharata, the great epic, describes the Earth as Parimandale, meaning round land. From the fifth chapter of the Jambokanda Bhava, Bhishma Bhava, the Mahabharata, it reads, this Bharatkand, Earth region, is called Sudarshanadweep, since it looks beautiful to the eyes of the onlookers. Being circular, it looks like the disk of the Lord. It is in the form of a globe, since all the four corners of this Bharatkand are rounded, like the bale fruit. In the Yoga Vishishta Maharamayan, chapter 30, uh, Vishishta says to Lord Ram, So when there are ants on the nerve and ball, all sides are reckoned below that are under their feet. Such is the ball of earth in one of these worlds covered by vegetables and animals moving on it and by gods, demons and men walking upon it. In the Surya Siddhanta, 12th chapter 53 and 54 it reads, As the shape of the earth is spherical, Vatula, people in each place think themselves to be upmost, but as the globe of earth is situated in ether, when there is its lower and upper side? Now, the earliest documented mention of spherical Earth concept in Europe dates from around the 5th century BCE by the ancient Greek philosophers and mathematicians. That's quite well known. However, what's lesser well known is the fact that, yes, you probably had an exchange of information and culture between Greece and India via the corridor of the Persian Empire, for the most part. But actually, I'm proposing that most of this information came from India and exported it to Greece at an earlier stage. Now let's look at Aryabhata. He's a 5th century astronomer from India. In his Aryabhatiya chapter on Gola, he explores the rotation of the Earth on its axis, is described. He uses the Armelian sphere model, and Earth directly described as a sphere with its five elements. Sphere in his book is singular, implying it represents a terrestrial planet like the Earth, but one that is also the celestial sphere. The celestial sphere is an abstract sphere which has a large radius and is concentric to Earth. All objects in the sky can be conceived as being projected upon the inner surface of the celestial sphere. It is used a lot by astrologers and astronomers. Look at this 8th century Durga Surya temple in Karnataka in India. Have a look closely. This actually uh, represents there Vraha, the boar incarnation of Lord Vishnu. He is said to have lifted the Earth on his tusks. Let's have a closer look at those tusks in the sculpture here. Yes, there you have it, a circular round earth. Incidentally, it has Mount Meru on the top there, but that's for another subject. Look at this metal bugola made by Shambhakana, made in 1571, supported there by the four directional elephants as described in the Puranas. But most part here, we're dealing with a sphere. But what about Bhumandala, which means earth disk, in the fifth canto of the Bhagavatam, the ancient Bhagavat Purana, which is described as four billion miles in diameter? This is my understanding. Different yugas in ancient history, of course, going back millions of years, had different definitions of earth, Burloka, and that's according to the influence and accessibility of the various rulers of those times. For example, millions of years ago in the Satya Yuga, the entire solar system and all the associated heavenly realms, called Bumandala, was basically the greater Earth. In the Treta Yuga, global Earth and the heavenly realms of Jambadweep. In the Dwapa Yuga, Earth meant globe Earth, but certain people could still access Jambadweep, which is uh, basically an island of heavenly realms accessible from the Earth we know today. And in this Kali Yuga, uh, kings rule regions within the global Earth, but not in its entirety and no access at all to Jambudweep. In the Bhugola Varanam 5.19.19, this is a work by Sri Vadivad Tirtha, the 15th century. It reads, Southernmost division of Bharatvash, described in the Vishnu and Vayu Puranas, is an island from which one cannot access the other parts of Bharat. It is a thousand yojanas at 8,000 miles in width and height. It is named variously as Bharatkand, 
or Sudarshana. And the earth is kind of like a little prison for us and our five senses. Also in the Bhagavad Varanam, in the version translated uh, from Sanskrit by Badarinarayan Murthy, his book includes this drawing of Bharat Kand based on the actual uh, text itself. Again, a circular earth there. Now let's look at some of the quotes by A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, the founder of Charya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. He, for a start, didn't seem to have any con uh, problem with the concept of an earth globe. In the Bhagavatam 32343 purport, he writes, All the planets are here described as Gola, round. Every planet is round, just like islands in the great ocean. This is Bhagavad Gita lecture in New York. Just like here in this planet, when you go up, you see it is a ball, but in this ball there are so many controlling deities here also. This is a discussion uh, with Shamsunda Prabhu. How much the big Vraha animal was to pick up the whole earth, earthly planet, just like a ball. In a conversation in London in 1973, Prabhupada said, In the Vedic Shastra, millions of years ago, it is mentioned Bugola. Gola means round. In Los Angeles, Prabhupada said, The world is round, that is fact. Bu means the earth, Gola means round. According to Sanskrit, it is called Bugola, long, long ago, before Galileo. And finally, an interesting subject here. This, of course, is the earth in stereographic projection, which some people actually think that's what the Vedas is describing, but it's a working model more than anything else. It's not supposed to be taken as the literal shape of the earth. But let's look at this, shall we? I just want to explore this area. Let's say you wanted to go for a flight in Australian Sydney to Cape Town in um, South Africa. So you may perhaps make a couple of flights there, not direct perhaps, to Dubai and then on to Cape Town. A kind of a straight line when using the Earth in stereographic projection. But you turn that into a globe, and this is what you actually get. This is, this is the actual direction of the flight. Now, flat Earth conspiracy theorists say, well, why not go straight then? If the Earth is a globe, then why not go straight from Australia to um, Africa? And they get very excited about that. But of course, the flat work, uh, flat model only works because domestic planes avoid Antarctica. And the vast majority of international airports are in the northern hemisphere or in the northern or near the hemisphere. That's where the majority of the world's population is also. So it's more geopolitical. So who we all are here, on this globe, of course, in our happy lives, and of course limited to our five senses, but it doesn't mean there aren't other things we can't see. In fact, that's one a major point there of the uh, Bhagavad Purana, for example. Yes, we may be living on a globe from our limited point of view, but there's a lot more out there, like Jamburweep here, and the various heavenly realms from which we can access, or used to be able to access, in former yugas. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this. Take care now.